Hello friends, welcome to this uh, show on cartoon and cartoonist. Today I have a very special guest, a very good friend who doesn't require any introduction. People in Kolkata, especially the people who love football, they know him very well because he coached two of the uh, Kolkata's most premier clubs in 2005-06 uh, and 2010. He helped uh, his Bengal club to clinch the prestigious uh, Federation Cup and there are many more. We all know him as a, a most charismatic coach uh, from Kolkata Moidan, but not many are aware that uh, he has also tried his hands on many creative projects. He's a musician, uh, he's a media expert, he, he's an art director, of course he's a cartoonist, and the list is long. Uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, his journey as a cartoonist. Here comes uh, my friend Philip Derider. We call him Indy. He's joining directly from his studio in uh, Brook, Belgium. So hello Indy, very welcome. Uh, good to see you, good to see you after a long time. So how, how, how's life, uh, how's the situation there in Belgium? Hi Vivek, okay, and hi uh, India, as we say. But you're speaking for India, Bengal, but India also. Yeah. Uh, well, here it's, uh, I think it's uh, a lot like, uh, like, uh, like in, on your side. Mm -hmm. Everybody is locked down at the moment. Uh, it's difficult for everybody uh, to survive sometimes, uh, whatever is economically or psychologically. And um, everything is difficult. So uh, we try to survive the best possible. And uh, I think. It's a good occasion, uh, uh, and thank you for inviting me. Okay, on that show with you. Thank you so much. Uh, so we thought maybe we can discuss something about the cartoons uh, normally you do, uh, and that is of course our common interest here. So uh, okay. talking about your cartoons, maybe I can come directly to the point. Uh, I ha you have been doing cartooning for quite a long time. You are like uh, you have taken cartooning as seriously as the football. And your cartoons appeared in many, many international magazines and journals. So it, I was quite curious to know how it all started, how you took up cartoon. Hmm. Well, uh, already when I, when I was a, a child, uh, so some people told me in my family that I always wanted to draw, that I had a piece of paper and I draw, and uh, that's one thing. But uh, after that, uh, I think my grandmother, uh, gifted me some uh, Tintin books. So of course, <laughs> must be an influence there, somewhere, somehow, certainly. And um, I think I, when, when I went to school, I'm more an autodidact than a school. Uh, I went to, to art school, sure, uh, but not a long, not a long time. Uh, I went to academy, but not a long time. And I did pretty things by myself, like, uh, but, uh, when it really started is when I was, uh, after my football career, when I get injured, uh, I worked in a company called Management Center Europe. Um, and uh, it's a very, very big corporate uh, company. Um, and uh, there I enter as a, a print boy and a mill boy <laughs> at the beginning when I was very young, just after being injured. And I, and it started when I, I draw cartoons on the books uh, I was helping to print. And uh, one day, the CEO the, of the company uh, said, who is drawing like that on the boxes, on our cartoon boxes? And then uh, it's me, and that's how it started professionally. So from there, uh, I took up uh, as a graphic designer, I was a uh, I promoted in the uh, in the design uh, section of the of the company, mm -hmm. and um, there it started. That's how it started. Then I went in America. Then I then I draw a lot of cartoons for the banks. Then for Metropolitan Life, I went to Snoopy. Uh, uh, luckily, I was uh, hired by a company who was a Disney as account. So I helped uh, Disney, not in the animation, but in, in the advertising. So that's how it all started. But Metropolitan Life, uh, they liked it a lot. 
So I was doing uh, cartoons for the the presidents of the companies. So uh, all the, the directors and presidents of uh, Metropolitan Life Insurance uh, were doing some uh, conferences. So um, I was uh, helping them uh, uh, throwing cartoons for them when they, they wanted to explain something in management. And so. so that's how it all started, I guess. That's what the story. That's quite an interesting story. Uh, was uh, Tintin uh, an influence by any chance? Must be, uh, surely. You know, today when you are you're getting a little bit less or younger, as we say. Uh, because I, I have seen uh, when many of the newspapers, uh, maybe one example, what I can see here, uh, and maybe some uh, newspapers, even in Kolkata, where they called you as a, a Tintin of uh, Brussels football. Yes, yes. And of course, yes, like, you a, are from the land of Tintin, uh, the character is so, so close to our heart. Yes, yes. But it also, that's a, it may be a, a coincidence or it may be an influence, I don't know what exactly it is. But uh, I follow, the, I've been in nearly all countries uh, uh, with uh, uh, that Tintin has been too. So that's why they call me the Tintin of uh, football uh, in Brussels. From Belgium, my, myself. So okay. Because I, I went in, in every adventure, but through football, but in every land. I went to, to Africa, I went to America, you know, I went to India. Yeah. You know, also I went to China also. I went to, so there's a lot, a lot of, uh, of these uh, the countries that I, I followed. Uh, and I, hmm. Yeah. Okay. The similarities there and uh, uh, many people, many cartoonists or many illustrators, they uh, sometimes often they draw cartoons of Tintin or the characters. Uh, even I have seen that you have also uh, recently done one uh, uh, a tribute on RJ, and you are also planning what I heard that uh, you are planning one uh, a tribute exhibition once this pandemic is over, and you wanted to uh, go to some different parts of uh, Belgium. So. I just wanted to know, are we allowed to uh, draw cartoons and exhibit it? Because I have heard that uh, there are some st very stringent rules uh, imposed by Amon uh, How is it? Maybe yeah. we can hear from you. I have seen some yeah. of your work that you have done. So it was not the Tintin, mm -hmm. but uh, you used your own characters. But it was yeah, a exactly. perfect tribute uh, to RJ and his eternal character. Yeah, yeah so... Yes, you're, you're right. There's a, a lot of uh, restrictions uh, concerning Tintin. Uh, but especially, uh, but again, it changes uh, every every year, as we say, or every month. So they, the, um, before it was owned by Moulin Sarr, you know, and then uh, in 2015, there was uh, something going on with Casterman. And, uh, but Moulin Sarr has a very, very strict rules, and it was very, very complicated. Uh, it seems that uh, today it's a little bit less complicated, but uh, still uh, nothing is really, uh, do you say that, very established. We are still in the discovering of the law. Uh, and so even if the law is there, but it's still very uh, flexible, I would say. So uh, something I'm thinking you, you can not do without the authorization whatever it's from uh, Monata or Casterman, uh, is to reproduce Tintin as uh, it is here, like the Triangle du Diamant Verde. You cannot reproduce Tintin exactly. So the exact copy, a copy, exact copy of Tintin in a different situation than in his album, or not done by LG, normally you cannot do. Until and unless uh, you have an agreement uh, with uh, the one who owns the copyright. The so Monata or Casterman, you know, Whatever they it's today, but, uh, okay, so but what you can do mm -hmm. uh, uh, is also uh, create, uh, which a lot of uh, cartoonists have done. Also, it's uh, taking uh, Tintin as an inspiration and uh, get their own uh, cartoon character uh, look-alike cartoon. Who was it? influence Tintin in one way or another, like you, you can see it here on this slide. So uh, and that's, the, that's what I did also uh, with my character, Ed uh, I my tribute to, to 
FG is to put, put him in a different situation, but also with different uh, attitudes, with different philosophies, and uh, with a different approach, uh, not only on the on the Tintin character, but also on what FG did, because FG painted also. So, uh, so I I pay my tribute to, to that. Into a uh, I hope as soon as the the, the COVID is a uh, done that uh, it could be that it will be international mm -hmm. because the uh, Tintin is international. So I would like uh, to see if it's possible. Yes, in in Belgium, of course, but uh, also uh, in uh, different countries and including India, which I uh, which I hope. Uh, I will do uh, before myself. I leave uh, this uh, beautiful world. I will say. Oh, that's a very very nice insight. Maybe we can uh, in future, if possible, we can have a completely different session only on the Tintin and like uh, this part. So uh, coming to uh, your career, what you uh, started with as uh, like when you started as a uh, art director and you worked on uh, many companies professionally. Uh, like uh, you have worked as an animator, as a uh, designer, uh, and you formed your own studio, uh, Studio 360 in Belgium. And later you also uh, brought uh, that studio to Kolkata. Uh, the viewers, uh, if they may not be aware that uh, around 2005-06, uh, when Hindi was there in Kolkata, he formed his studio. Uh, and incidentally, that was the place where we both uh, came together and we worked closely. So working on very different things uh, and uh, I've seen you, how you visualize it. Uh, so like when you are coming back from the ground and you are a completely different man, uh, discussing and brainstorming together on uh, some creative projects. One example, maybe a book that time when you released it on Kolkata, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, pictorial book uh, where you shared your journey and a very pictorial format. And uh, there are lots of like motivational quotes are there. Uh, so many collectors that time, they, uh, they collected this book, which are still there in their position, like mine. So maybe you can show how you actually planned. Well, it was, um, as everywhere I go in the world, I always try to, football is one of my main, sometimes it's design and so, but in uh, the last, uh, I'd say the last uh, 20 years, it's been football. So wherever I go with football, I try to uh, to develop the the design and cartoons and, uh, and uh, studio side also of me, which is part of me. And um, but I think it, it's because I don't know, I don't know, but it's certainly because my father as a football uh, was a football player also, and my mother was an artist. So I took both of them. So I always say, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. But I'm like, that's, <laughs> and people say, you're a little bit an, uh, an artistic coach, sometimes doing some crazy, you know, trials and uh, that nobody sees. And uh, I say, yeah, maybe it must be from, from that side, uh, from the cartoon. So I try, when I went to Calcutta, uh, I try, uh, you know, I opened the studio, the 360 studio. And uh, that's where, um, I advertised for uh, because I, I need a, uh, I needed a, a really good uh, uh, graphic designer with this kind of same feeling uh, that uh, I have and that I would like to pro project to the 360 studio. So I interview many people, many people, many people, like more than hundreds, and you know, uh, more. Uh, and then I came to you, you know, when I saw your your uh, design, the way you see design. Uh, I say, yeah, that's it. That's uh, one of the closest uh, with the same uh, kind of uh, artistic feelings uh, in, in design. And uh, that's how uh, I get you and to meet you and to see how good you were also. Because uh, you're very good, as I always say. You're a good designer. And, uh, you, you, uh, and that's when I introduced you to cartoons, the Belgian cartoons, you know, and you were more and more interested in, in the cartooning. So you get this influence, the, the new markers, you know, that uh, what we following with uh, right. was new because it didn't exist in India at that time. Mm -hmm. Also, this kind of, uh, it existed, that, that was very, very available. Very yes, yes. Yeah, it was not available. Mm -hmm. So we share all these things and uh, uh, 
and then you started to, to, to get uh, more and more interested in cartoons. Yeah, so, I, I joined as a more like a multimedia expert and a web designer, yeah. but slowly yeah. I moved to cartoon, like seeing your cartooning. I started doing it. I started uh, following the style that you use, the materials that you use, and you guided me that yeah. time. So actually yeah. that brought the interest in me and I started doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And and most important part was the, the during the 2010, I think, the, during the World Cup time, you came up with a fantastic comic strip. And it was, uh, I, I still uh, believe that it was one of uh, your best work so far. It was called uh, Candy Die. Uh, it used to appear on a very uh, known, a very noted newspaper in Kolkata. Uh, as we know that uh, during the World Cup time, uh, uh, news medias, whether it's a channel or a newspaper, they uh, bring all the experts uh, in the show. They discuss it. They analyze the match. Uh, so Indy was also there. He was uh, writing the, his match report. But unlike others, he actually went a step further and to draw the, uh, this uh, uh, pocket cartoons on the very next day. And if you see closely, uh, why I see I, it as one of the most phenomenal one. I, we know that uh, this uh, 2010 World Cup, uh, the South Africa World Cup, it, it is known for many weird things. Many uh, different things happened. And in this cartoon, the Indy came up with all those uh, small, small things. And it is a perfect documentation, I would say. If you see the one cartoon where he is talking about the Jabulani, the football uh, which he was used at, which was called the perfect ball and which was unfortunately uh, known for an imperfect flight. He was talking about uh, Jabulani. He was actually using some satire about the players. If you see uh, the Sutser Octopus Paul, who has become a star of uh, predicting the right turn of eight out of eight uh, prediction came correct. So all these small, small things were there. Uh, then uh, you have the hand of God too by uh, Suarez and uh, God himself was there as a coach. Uh, Diogo Maradona, great Diogo Maradona was there as a coach. So you captured all the small, small things. And if you put all the cartoons together, it was actually giving the complete view of that edition of the World Cup. Right. Correct. But, but um, yeah. And I must say that it was uh, the beginning of the, um, the story is that the, it's uh, the newspaper who asked me to, to develop a character mm -hmm. uh, called Mr. Candid Eye and uh, to, to come up with a, a Indian type, character type, but uh, with an Indian feeling. Uh, so that's how I created uh, Mr. Candid Eye for the and mixing it with all the, the football, but the football I know also, the little, as you say, the little details uh, that, uh, that uh, we can see. It so, came out uh, really, was, uh, really nice. Very, very good experience. Yeah. Also, and there was, there was a, that time was the only, one of the only times I combined um, computers. That was in fact the first, <laughs> for another, I did it differently, but this time I also had an assistant, Sandipan, mm -hmm which was excellent in, uh, he was excellent in, um, in coloring, finding and mixing mm -hmm. my, my cartoons draw by hand mm -hmm. with uh, uh, associated to computers. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I was doing in fact the ID and the, and the, and the design, the black and white, mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, I sit down with him and he was putting the colors and, uh, and, um, and uh, we were trying to find uh, the best and he was very good also. So uh, that was a perfect condition. That was one of the first uh, times I, I, I mixed the uh, computer with the uh, design because there, there was one reason for that. It's because of time. We had to come up with a cartoon very, very quick. You know, we didn't have a, a lot of time. So if you miss one cartoon, if you miss the coloring, you have to redo everything, etc. Yeah. So, so it was a choice mm -hmm. of um, to, to, to go faster, okay? Because every day, we had to put a, a cartoon out there. And as it was printed, you know, a very uh, early evening, you know, and the match, uh, some matches also with, was, uh, were very close uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to the deadline of the printing uh, of the newspaper. So that's uh, the reason why we started like that. But it was exceptional experience. And, uh, and uh, this particular cartoon series uh, become kind of a catalyst uh, uh, for another bigger project uh, where like we both uh, collaborated uh, for the next two World Cups. Yes, but that's, that's ah, what, uh, here, here it is. For you, and that's uh, all honor to do because 
uh, you made fantastic progress in uh, your cartoons and uh, and uh, caricatures, if not caricatures, but uh, lookalikes uh, was very very good, really. And that uh, um, I was very pleased to that we that we you know that we joined together and had to do this one, especially you know when, when it's a really nice book, uh, personally. Yeah. And it, Besides uh, it being you, and we know each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But uh, it's a very interesting book and very well done. And a cartoon is effectively a, a good way to to show the work of differently than in a, a normal book. A normal book is very good too, but cartoons are the. It's easier to read. It appeals to now a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people who are influenced also by the cartoon, by Tintin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a follow-up. It's a very uh, it's very easy and uh, enjoyable experience to read. It. I also added to the uh, FIFA uh, World Football Museum Library. And for for us, cartoon it is a uh, it's a recognition also to, to, to be in the FIFA library, etc. And to yeah, that was another one that that we did for a newspaper together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very pleased also. Is uh, you know it's uh, it's very good uh, experience of life. You know, but yes, like. and, and 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 another one I can see here, uh, the one uh, on the right hand side. Uh, I think that is one of your very old cartoon. And uh, yeah. as um, many people know, that uh, the, the Belgium national team is called the Red Devils, and this was uh, Indy's depiction of Red Devil. So he has done lots of cartoon. I have a couple of cartoons with me as well, uh, where he has done lots of posters that uh, during that time, some of his early work. Can you see here? Uh, he has done beautiful, all those posters with the Red Devil there. So. Yes, the steel foot is a, I, I really like the, the character. Maybe one, that's the steel foot, in fact, uh, if you remember, that we uh, tried to animate for uh, his Bengal. Because at the time, in Bengal was not was in, in development. Let me say in the marketing part of, of the site in UK. And I, and I thought uh, with the studio we we try to uh, to come up with an animation uh, because uh, it's a great way to, to promote the club also sometimes to get animation. So we animated the field foot also at that time. So that was a good experience. And uh, other than the uh, the sports cartoon, usual sports cartoon, you have done lots of other cartoons as well. I have seen a few, but though it was not uh, very frequent, but you have also done uh, some cartoons on the nature, the uh, social cartoons also. So there are some examples I have seen, uh, maybe the one uh, with the uh, Australian bushfire, you created that cartoon. And it has also has some political aspect of it. Yes, of course, it is, a, it is an extra meaning of uh, this kind of cartoon where I try to, to pass a message, mm -hmm. uh, like in every, every cartoon it does, uh, in these cartoons. Uh, and, uh, but I'm particularly sensible to, uh, yeah, to the ecology, of course, like uh, a lot of people today, uh, but uh, sometimes it, it, there are some... Uh, I think sometimes the world is crazy sometimes. <laughs> and you see why the koalas, when the koalas were, were burning, while the trees were burning, it was a disaster. The two political men, you know, were shouting to each other. And then I find some sometimes uh, surrealistic. We Belgians are surrealist, no for surrealistic things. But sometimes they are, it shouldn't be, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in such times, like when big things happen, uh, I think uh, every politics uh, should uh, calm down and concentrate to, to the essential uh, and leave a little bit all the debate about pol politics, power, money, and all this uh, religion and all these things. Uh, let it uh, let it go away for a while and let's uh, let's do the things that we have to do to. To, to make this planet better. And uh, voila, and, uh, let, it, let it be. Okay, there are more important things. To, that's, that's what my message. Mm. If you see, you know, and, the other and, one also. And, and you also created uh, your own character, like uh, Arjas Tintin. You created your own character. Uh, 
it's called ed redder and uh, most of your cartoons uh, we can see him doing something as a central character or he is like listening to others who is he and uh, where he came from as i see uh, like uh, in most of the cases like uh, like he is also traveling like you and we can see him like uh, going to the different parts of the world and he is uh, doing multiple things he can also uh, play some uh, musical instrument he can also draw he is also uh, sharing his thoughts uh, sometime i feel that he is your alter ego yes absolutely absolutely is uh... It's, it's like a little bit. Uh, we we have a Belgian uh, character called uh, the cat, called the shark, called Pete from Philippe de Luc, mm-hmm. and the cat speaks for for him. And, uh, and yeah, absolutely, uh, he's a little bit my alter ego, mm-hmm. uh, Ed Redir. And if you take his name Ed Redir, and you put it mirror wise, it makes uh, the rider. So yeah, definitely my my alter ego, which uh, I try to. The project to in this character. You can see. He's a that... musician. He likes to draw. He likes to travel. He likes adventure, uh, and he likes also to observe uh, the human nature and uh, and share it. Uh, also, uh, yeah, and pass some messages. He is going to some different parts of the, the world. As I see him, like he came to Kolkata along with you, wearing our uh, favorite clubs uh, jersey. Sometimes like uh, wearing the Tintin set at the uh, most iconic places like Victoria. and we can see also the, the cricket players there i think it is saurabh ganguly that you uh, tried to sketch there <laughs> it was a very interesting <laughs> one and the mm-hmm. best part was like uh, whoever was following your uh, the social media handle most of the time we have seen that uh, in any of this indian uh, festivity uh, ed reader is coming there with a perfect uh, indian attire with our indian tricolors and wishing everyone thank you yeah because he is part of that uh, to And, uh, so, as I said, I love, I love Calcutta, I love India, etc., etc. So, it's, uh, it's, it's and uh, do, that, uh, that that he is there because he. And during the lockdown period, we are all at like at home and nothing to do. That time also, uh, the Ed Reader came uh, just to motivate us, and like uh, they came with a uh, various uh, uh, nice games there. Uh, so, how mm-hmm. to beat Corona to uh, reach your destinations. so those are really nice ones so uh, it actually shows like a uh, cartoon is not only about the cartoons but the various way you can actually project you can do it uh, through some uh, nice games like this yes 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 and uh, I, i thought about uh, you know everybody is boring himself at home and has to lock down and, uh, and i say okay well, how can i help you know to 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 improve the situation a little bit a little bit so mm-hmm. Well, as like having a coffee, team. like uh, you can see here, uh, Ed Reader here with some uh, his thoughts and his yes. ideas. So he's there yes. everywhere. Yes. In most of his cartoons, you will find uh, he's there and he's thinking something. He's uh, trying to tell something, which is uh, actually the most uh, interesting part of his cartoons. Yeah, yeah. But so that was a good project also for with the mugs and so and so because now everybody, you know, uh, all cartoonists uh, are trying. uh to to project them as much as possible in, in different ways mm. so the everything changes quickly and uh, and we can also also produce uh, things uh, alone before you needed a, a producer somebody who put the money in you know and everything was expensive and uh, uh, you may you have to make a book or cartoon book uh, you needed uh, somebody uh, a casterman uh, you know in belgium uh, to publish it and because it costs a lot of money now you can print uh, yourself okay uh, your own book mm-hmm. which is interesting and uh, like the mugs before it was very expensive to do mm-hmm. now uh, it's less expensive to produce so you can you can share one two three five ten and samples 20 samples whatever the demand is you can produce which is very nice mm-hmm. so it becomes more affordable who who likes uh, cartoons and uh, who likes to cut <laughs> yeah so uh, that's uh, that's a positive thing for the cartoonists and the people who like art in uh, in today's world mm-hmm. rather than uh, 30 years ago yeah that's true 
and i have couple of uh, your cartoons when uh, what you have done during that uh, 360 days uh, that time and i can show uh, the viewers the cartoons you can see how detailed it is you see even the background you see the characters uh, their postures you can see the light and shadow the way he has done the best part is like everything uh, the way he draws it is all manual there is no uh, use of any computer there so maybe we can uh, take you through uh, his uh, studio where he's sitting there uh, fortunately i have some couple of uh, pictures <laughs> we can i can show you which he shared with me during when it was setting up and uh, when i visited i also captured few the studio here yeah. yes 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 uh, but as i say and there is a part there is a good feeling about doing things manually okay if you have the time of course to to do it and uh, and uh, it has a i think a, a different flavor because computers today are great and you can do a lot of things and quickly also but uh, i still uh, think there is a you can see the difference sometimes uh, when it's computerized or when it's done by hand and uh, my opinion uh, on money is that uh, still uh, on the hand sometimes you see imperfection but that imperfection make it special uh, sometimes or that uh, maybe it's not the right kind of tone that you choose you cannot change it uh, but still it makes it uh, interesting so you get that uh, nice feeling uh, i get a nice feeling doing it, doing it by hand when it's possible and 90 as i say 90% of the time i'm using uh, my own uh, color to to color it Hila, but i'm still looking for uh, somebody who can do colors uh, because sometimes you but by hand because sometimes you don't have the time you have a project but you have so less time to do it that you need to like uh, rg this uh, with a uh, team uh, so uh, somebody else was putting the colors and uh, so i'm i'm still uh, sometimes looking for a very very good colorist uh, to to do some projects yeah and i can see the uh, the colors and all this which you have you have been using it uh, for so long and it actually gives yeah. that kind of feel yeah yeah and uh, especially this kind of markers you know we share that now there's a, a chinese version also uh, um in the controversy is also you know because it's so cheap but uh, i don't you know some of the markers uh, we use uh, Uh, are very expensive huh? uh, uh, you know they were in belgium uh, today they are going uh, about 480 rupees uh, uh, for one is very expensive huh? uh, and uh, instead uh, for the uh, the chinese version of it uh, sometimes it's 80 rupees okay which is much much cheaper so, so but still uh, uh, and now i'm combining both so i bought uh, a couple of uh, uh, Chinese and then some of the the other one the AB markers and uh, but it's still a uh, it's still good quality. So when we first connected today, I have seen you like uh, drawing some uh, uh, cartoons. So what is the uh, Ed Reader's uh, view on this pandemic? Is he saying something to us? That's my latest. My that's my latest. I don't know if you can see it. Oh wow! The breeze. It's, that's, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. See that? It's breeze. Get so, fresh air. Yeah, which is uh, Because, much more needed today. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, everybody is locked down, confined, and everybody, you know, and everybody is suffocating. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, there is a lot of theory about this uh, this pandemic, and um, I, I'm not. Uh, Uh, I cannot say I'm a specialist uh, in the, the COVID. I like everybody. I listen. I listen there and then. Uh, I get some good friends, uh, so I take their the opinion. But somewhere we don't know. There's so many theories going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a human being, for myself personally, and for many others that I feel my friends, I say breathe. Okay, go out. Uh, don't wear the mask. Breathe. You know, because we need it. Walk. Do something, you know, and because uh, we need it, so you don't get uh, suffocated by all that uh, worldwide uh, pandemic that are slowly, slowly killing people. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, even more than the than the than the COVID itself. So a lot of people are. In, I don't know in India, but, but I guess in India too, 
here in Belgium, a, a lot of people uh, recently, they still, uh, we get a, a person uh, who was a hairdresser mm -hmm. and she was beautiful, a lot of uh, talent. And then she, she killed herself because uh, she had to pay everything and uh, she was desperate, etc. So in this hard time, when a lot of people are suffering and uh, don't get enough money and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's time to breathe, it's time to breathe. They get it out, it's there. But anyway, it's, it's there. Okay, let's deal with it. Mm -hmm. and uh, try to breathe as much as possible in one way or another. And I think everybody has his own way to breathe. To and breathe. and now, now that uh, most of the cases you have seen that uh, uh, the new, new generation, they are not much interested to uh, take up uh, cartooning as a, uh, as a profession. You know that uh, uh, the opportunities are much lesser these days. So what is yeah. your suggestion for them? See, it's cartooning, you know, and art in general is very difficult. It's like football player. You know, all these artistic, because football is an art, some, all the artistic uh, life, the artistic life is a difficult one. But um, you have to... You have to feel it. First, you have to feel there's something inside you who is telling, okay, I am, I feel I have to do this. Well, I'm a footballer or a, a designer or filter or artist or singer, the same thing is the same. You have to feel it. But my suggestion today uh, will be work at some project. No, sometimes and with the lockdown you get some, some time to, to work at some project. At one point the, the lockdown will be gone. It will be gone. It can be one month, two months, one year, but it will be done. So work uh, on future projects today. But but also uh, I can show you a couple of examples where everybody can work, but but work also on a way to finance your life with cartoon. For example, I financed my life the last 20 years with football, I had football, and cartoons came because it's very difficult sometimes to make a living with cartoons. But sometimes it's good, it's easier with music. As I said, sometimes uh, uh, I really enjoy the, the experience of uh, music because Financially, it was very good, so it sustained my life. I had to eat also, my family had to eat, everybody had to eat. So it's difficult, but today I will say also what you can do uh, is create something who brings in money and use your cartoons for that. Let me say, for example, uh, which with one friend uh, we are doing uh, with beer. We are doing it with beer. Mm. A beer is a product. Mm. So my friend produces beer, mm. and I'm helping with my cartoons also. Doing the advertising for the beer also, trying to mix, trying to, to think. So maybe for cartoons, cartoonists, my best advice, especially in the pandemic, at the moment, if you really are desperate, I think, go for certain, a certain thing that you can make money with, and you can use your cartoons with it. For example, uh, you can uh, sell, uh, you can a uh, cookie, cookie, for example, cookie. If you have a store with cookies and all that, or you can do your own cookies and advertise with your, your cartoons on the package. Or you can uh, help uh, uh, somebody who sells cookies, uh, making a deal with him. I, I draw your cartoons and you'll give me 5% uh, of your cookies that you sell. It's an example. Okay, but yeah. something who can combine uh, the needs of today with something in the heart you have inside you. And these are, see, I think this is the way uh, that I think today my advice for cartoonists and people who are going into art. It's like before, if you go to, they want to paint, you want to paint, okay, but you paint uh, in the 1800s, you paint a portrait. Okay, even in 1900s, you pay a portrait because people were ready, there was less of photography, so they, 
you have to, to do something to make money. So you make a portrait. So, and people were paying you for the portraits. So um, that's, uh, that's one way you try to combine in your own way, in your own creativity, certain things that can bring you a financial income. Don't stay in cartoon in your beautiful cartoon if you, you draw beauty, but nobody, nobody will buy them, you will not present them, and financially you, you and your family will, will not be at peace. Okay, that's not good, I, uh, you know, that's not good because I have some of my friends like that. Okay, and they have, it's very, very difficult life. Okay, of course painting is everything, of course sculpting is everything, of course, sure, and we will do it, and we are, but try to, my advice in today's world, in today's world, try to balance everything. Yeah. Because uh, it's not easy, it's not easy. So rightly and, said. Uh, but of everybody is speaking about Picasso. Yeah. Everybody is speaking about all the big ones. Rembrandt, Van Gogh. So everybody is speaking about that. But nobody, you know, you have to still remember that sometimes Van Gogh, nobody bought his heart, and it's good that he had somebody with his family bringing the, the food, as we say, but nobody bought, bought his, and he never sell, sold one, one single painter. Yeah, the one he sold there was for the chicken, for the chicken to, to get the whole. So it's not easy. Uh, so to, in today, you have these medias uh, where you can also put on online, make a cut make a cut and even if three of your friends mm -hmm. three of your friends buy your cut it's already better sometimes than to go to go to a producer where you are going to get you're going to do the work <laughs> and yeah. they say oh i'm sorry can i will not pay you nothing that's true yeah it's good you have the work but then you you, you don't even have 80 rupees in your pocket as we say so i say today my advice is today take the Take the 80 rupees uh, that your friends, because you, they like you, they love you, they and develop your, your market. Mm -hmm. And uh, go outside and uh, present what you can do to help uh, some some people to, to, to get more business because of you sometimes. It's up to you. Or create your own business, create your own item to sell and, and develop it with your knowledge of cartoons. Market it like that. That's my advice in today's uh, pandemic. Thank you, Indy. And I think uh, today the time is almost over. It was a great discussing with you on the cartoons. It was, it was uh, refreshing for me every time I discuss with you on this uh, 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 interesting things. And hope uh, the viewers also like the session. They can share their comments. And if we see that you can find some interesting and encouraging comments, definitely we can come back uh, in the future with uh, more interesting uh, topics. So till then, uh, thank you so much, Indy, for joining today. Uh, and very best wishes. And more importantly, stay safe. Thank you, Vivek. I'm wishing you the same. And thank you for the interview. Stay safe.